This is genius. This is 20 years old. Do you realize the Matrix is 20 years old? They did this 20 years ago. <laughs> this is going to be the 2001 Space Odyssey of our generation. We are witnessing cinematic history in real time right now. Vidur, you just went ahead and did what you did with all your female partners. Just blew your load in the first minute. <laughs> now you have absolutely nothing left. Muncher. In a world filled with war, hate, suffering, and Justin Bieber, two guys fix it all with a battle about a movie, one film, two opinions, one coin, two sides, they feud. You decide. It's time for Film View. Hello and welcome to another episode of Film Feud, the podcast where we debate whether top rated movies should be top rated. I'm Vidur. And I'm Vikram. Hi Vikram. Hey Vidur, what's happening? Not much man, I'm pretty pumped to feud. Oh really? Yeah, you know, I'm not always that pumped, but today, pumped. Interesting, interesting. I thought you were always ready to go. No, that's just a face that I put on, a pumped face. But today, I'm internally, truly pumped. And why is that? Well, that's because the movie we're viewing this week is quite exciting. But before we get to that, why don't you tell the good folk, our pleasant listeners, what we're doing here? So we take a movie from the IMDb Top 250, we toss a coin, Heads argues for, and Tails argues not for. Not for. I wonder if anybody ever invented a word for that. Well... For that sentiment. Let me look it up. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, it's against. Oh, are you like Vicky the Robot? Like, yeah. Uh, uh, no, no, I'm like Sherlock. I reached into my mind palace. Uh-huh. And out came the word against. Okay, so Tales is against, I guess. That's right. And the movie we are feuding this week is none other than the Wachowski brothers, now sisters, 1999. In the middle siblings. In the middle siblings. Uber classic. The Matrix. The Matt. Ricks, also known as The Matrix, also known as the Green Philosophy Bullet Time movie. Green? It's green. It's a very green movie. Like green as in environmentally friendly? No. Green oh. as in it looks green. Everything is green. Oh. Okay. I'm kind of pumped. I haven't seen The Matrix in a long, long time. I haven't either. And I am not willing to reveal how I feel about it yet because, you know, I haven't seen it in a long time. That's the only reason. Of course. Why as else kid, there would be a reason? Yeah. As a 1999 kid, uh -huh. I was washed over uh -huh. by this movie. But I was a kid. Yeah. I liked Bollywood movies back then that I hate now. So We like The Phantom Menace then. That's true. And it came out the same year. Yeah. But this is not a feud about The Phantom Menace, is this it? This is about whether this movie deserves to be in the IMDb Top 250. And, you know, before we get caught up in not revealing or revealing our emotions, why don't we just get to it? Let's do the coin toss. Yeah, uh, let's do it. So I'll be tossing the coin. Heads argues for and tails argues not for. And I got not for, which I don't know exactly how to feel about that. I, I haven't seen this movie in the longest time, man. And I'm pretty sure it's not going to be as... Yes! Oh, really? I'm so, so, so <laughs> relieved. Well, honestly, now you can tell me. When was the last time you saw the movie? I haven't seen the movie in a long time. So I was going to go into it with a fresh perspective. But now I don't need to because uh -huh. it's The Matrix and it's the best f***ing movie of all time. So you're just going to become the 1999-year-old 613. I don't even know how old we were at that time. This movie takes me back to the glory of movies and action and special effects. It was like Philosophy 101 for me. Okay, this cut it, dude. Let's green. Just, can you save it? Glory. Stop saying green. I don't get. I don't get the green reference. I'm so curious to rewatch this movie and the see. The movie is green. The movie is mostly green. Oh, uh, I'm colorblind. Does that help? No, it does not. For you, the movie is all gray. <laughs> That's not what colorblindness means. But uh, I'm pretty excited, man. I haven't seen this movie in upwards of maybe 15, 16 years. So what? Yeah. I don't what? Know. Yeah. Can we just pause on that for a second? What are you saying? You never went back and rewatched The Matrix? I mean, are you just saying this in to school, pretend? maybe, yeah, but I don't remember watching it after school. Oh, man, this is so convenient. The coin comes against and you haven't seen it in 15 years. I see how it is. And now you're going to go back and say, oh my God, I rewatched it and it sucked. Fine, I'll give you a chance. Why don't you go watch it with some fresh oh, eyes? Thanks, Vidur. With some adult eyes. Thanks, Vidur. So let's go watch the movie. But before we do, a word to our sponsors. This episode is sponsored by Flow Mattress. What is Flow Mattress? It's the promise of the deepest sleep of your life. 
They have a unique 100 night trial policy so you can actually sleep on the mattress for 100 nights and if you're not sleeping substantially better then you can send it back for a full refund no questions asked and because the mattresses are shipped directly from the factory to you without any middlemen they are 50% cheaper compared to traditional brands and start from only 9989 you can log on to flowmattress.com to find out more about this disruptive offering that's f l o mattress.com Film Feud listeners also get an exclusive 10% discount when they use the code Film Feud on their purchase. So happy sleeping and for us happy feuding. Should we just get to it? Let's go watch the movie. Let's go watch the movie. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's like I'm a child again and I'm just seeing the magic of movies and action and kung fu and trinity. It's like I have a crush on Trinity all over again. Who's hotter than Trinity? You know we might be living in a machine right now. Do you realize? Wake up, Vikram. Wake up. Do you get the pun there? This movie is like cyberpunk. It's like being exposed to metal music for the first time, or rock, or whatever you're into. It's radically poetic. Are you following me? Are you following the deep layers that I have inside my little soliloquy here? Because the movie is all about deep layers. Uh-huh. It's just like an onion. It just unfolds. Onion. I learned so much watching it this time. In okay. fact, knowing more about the movie just makes you go deeper. This is genius. This is 20 years old. Do you realize the Matrix is 20 years old? They did this 20 years ago. <laughs> This is going to be the 2001 Space Odyssey of our generation. We are witnessing cinematic history in real time right now. Vidur, you just went ahead and did what you did with all your female partners. Just blew your load in the first minute. <laughs> No, you have absolutely nothing left. You're like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm feuding the Matrix right now. I'm going to prepare this monologue for a minute. I'm just going to use like all the words I can think of correlating to this movie. And just, I'm going to blow my load. Just, just give me 15 minutes, and I'll be good to go. <laughs> you have 15 minutes to do what you want. Oh, uh, that's so impressive, Vidur. That's so impressive. But uh, are you serious, dude? Like all, all jokes aside. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me just pause you. Let me just point out to you, because of this podcast that we do here. You are about to say terrible things about the Matrix. Have you taken a moment to question your reality? Yeah. So basically, when I was rewatching this movie, I obviously loved it as a kid too, man. Like, who didn't watch and love the Matrix when it came out, or even a few years after that? And I was a little nervous when I started watching this movie because, in my mind, it was the same movie that I had perceived when I was a kid. And I was, well, I, I think pleasantly surprised—the wrong term—but I was surprised to see that it's actually not that good. This movie is not a movie. This movie is a video game, right? And if you're just filling in dialogues and scenes and supposed plot building just so that you can get to your high octane action sequences, then it's not a movie anymore, man. It's a video game. I'd rather watch these guys do kung fu and all their matrix slow mo shit all the time just for like an hour straight, rather than make it like a two two and a half hour movie which is filled with just bullshit. What you're describing is like what the Mission Impossible and the Fast and the Furious movies are reduced to, which is this that, is what it is. No, those movies are we are gonna have four. set pieces and come up with some bullshit to fill in the rest this movie is actually oh, are we talking plot about the matrix driven. or fast no, and furious not you oh. loser this, this movie is plot driven this movie would work without the action sequences that's the best part <laughs> <laughs> of course it would of course it would i'm sorry i'm sorry Stop overreacting. You just said the Matrix would work without the action sequences. It a hundred percent would. As If what? I asked you to name the five set pieces in the movie, you wouldn't even be able to do that. There, I don't think there are five. I think like three. Well, I mean, there's a kung fu fight in the middle, Morpheus, Neo. Like those things drive character, right? And I think this came from like Hong Kong cinema and anime, where the action is kind of like Dragon Ball Z. Like the action is what's <laughs> informing the character. <laughs> You're trying to make a point, but then you're ruining it yourself. I did lose my point there a little bit. Dragon Ball Z is Fast and Furious is the Matrix. This is all action, man. I retract Dragon Ball no, Z. I can, no, I cannot. No, I retract because said. the Matrix would work without the action scenes. <laughs> Just stop saying that, man. I need to feud with you, dude. I can't feud with you if you say absurd shit like that. I think I get it now, Vikram. I uh, think. Uh huh. I think you just didn't take the red pill in this movie. by which i mean you just didn't absorb the movie at the layer it's meant to be absorbed uh-huh. you just saw the movie and you just saw the action sequences uh-huh. and you knew you were going to feud it and you just like oh my god everything else is filler in right. fact that everything else is what you should have focused on the wachowski brothers at the time let's just refer to them as that in 1999 way ahead of the curve on the whole ai scare right back right then it was like the y2k thing but you know yeah. After Terminator these guys pretty much were like the biggest movie that actually addressed that in such a real effective way except 
movies like the terminator had done it before it's not like they created something that was new they just based it on already existing fictional pieces of work you know what i want to use this as a means to just start talking about the casting and the actors in this movie cuz i have i have a lot to bring up no, in terms of no but i have of, so much more sploosh to go yeah tu sploosh kar rahe ho yaar pure episode mein don't you go down the rabbit hole you follow the white rabbit so much foreshadowing it's like alice in wonderland it's like the wizard of oz of our time you know and then they refer to that as well you ain't in kansas no more dorothy or whatever cipher says Trinity's in Dominatrix gear. I mean, what more could you want? Oh God, man, this movie is. Let's let's talk about the acting. Let's okay. talk about the cast. Okay, we have Keanu Reeves here. Mm-hmm. I for AKA one, Mr. Anderson. Anderson means son of Christ. Anderson, the deepness, the forced deepness. Okay, just because it's there doesn't mean. By the mean way, it, it I said it. deepness, and you followed. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but just just the fact that it's there doesn't mean just make it cool, man. So Keanu Reeves, I for one prefer the Bill and Ted Keanu Reeves. Post this movie, I don't know what the Wachowski siblings, brothers, sisters did to him, but he clearly he clearly didn't vibe with what they were trying to vibe with, and it just ruined him forever, man. Like now Keanu Reeves is just playing Neo in all his movies, and if he's going to be playing Neo in all his movies, he might as well just go down the John Wick route and not say anything, just do the cool action stunts and move on. Who cares? Why are we talking about this? We're talking about the Matrix. This is the birth of Keanu Reeves. This is the death of Keanu Reeves. Is what I'm trying to say. Whatever he's, he's, died he's in so glory. bad in this movie. He's he's a martyr I'm willing to do you sacrifice. think he was a good actor in this movie it doesn't matter I thought Neo was awesome and I think Keanu Reeves played him exactly what, what do you mean Neo did. was awesome like his action sequences and all were awesome or the character was awesome or Keanu Reeves' portrayal of the character Neo was awesome Keanu Reeves' portrayal of Neo didn't need to be awesome it was just exactly what it was he had to play clueless for pretty much the whole movie right resisting his destiny or whatever and so maybe a finer actor could have like overtly emoted but that's what morpheus is for that's what trinity is for she has all the emotional stakes he almost has no emotional stakes he's just like a fish out of water a fish out of matrix he he doesn't even seem clueless he doesn't even seem like he doesn't understand he he seems like he has no idea he just seems stonewalled the entire movie he's just stonewalling through it he has the biggest role in this movie we need an actor to play a biggest role in the movie not a a stone Imagine if you found out you were the one. I would be losing my shit, right? So would you, so would everyone. Not this guy's like, no, oh, you wouldn't. I am the one. No, I am not the one. You'd have to keep I it have together. I'm thinking, oh, I know karate. Oh, bullet stop. It's kung fu. I know kung fu. Jesus. Yeah, seriously. How can you mess that up? If he would have emoted more that the dialogue would have been like, you know, imprinted in my head. It's just the same. It's just like monotone, Keanu Reeves, mono expression. Everything is mono. That means he's just single. He's just like flying through the movie, except you know where he's done the hard work is to learn the kung fu and the karate moves and all of that stuff can you therefore just, it's a video game he's he, he did a very good job at a video game character can you stop repeating the, the fact that keanu can't act and it's a video game keanu can't act and it's it's a video game oh deja vu glitch in the matrix oh jesus dude okay anything for keanu reeves anything pro because you doesn't seem like you had anything pro for keanu reeves in his acting in this movie you know acting because he's an actor in a movie to me he's just neo he's just neo that's how good he is right also i mean let's face it in 1999 this was kind of the first exposure to keanu reeves So to me it's perfect. Keanu Reeves is the one. That's it. I actually saw a l- not a lot but a few Keanu Reeves movies before I saw The Matrix. We all saw Speed. Okay. Not Speed. I've seen a, have you seen a Walk in the Clouds? You saw a Walk in the Clouds before you were 11? Yeah. Ah, uh, thirteen. I think I have yet to see it. Why are we talking about other movies? Because, Let's move on. Because I actually saw what Keanu Reeves could do when he was acting, man. And then The Matrix came out, and it was just overpowered special effects CGI. And after that, Keanu Reeves was gone. He was he was taken away from us, never to be seen again. It's glorious CGI. Okay, it's nineteen ninety nine. Different adjectives. The Ad- best CGI possible. They invented. Bullet time. How many movies have tried to copy Bullet time since then? Akshay Kumar did it in that movie. Those guys. <laughs> which one? <laughs> I don't know. That was a Matrix scene. I remember seeing, which is the exact copy of the scene when they're they're in the ground floor just shooting Trinity and Neo. The, Akshay Kumar did that. Hallway fight. Yeah, Akshay Kumar did that. The exact same thing. Don't tell me you haven't seen this. Yeah, I don't care. I don't I, I'm not even it. going to go to the did it better because I don't care about either scenes. But There's no movie has done it better. There's been 20 years for movies to try and do it better. What's even come close? I mean, honestly, the best action movie after this. There's nothing. There's nothing that come close. I mean, the CGI fests don't come close because they go a different direction. The practical ones don't come close. I guess Mad Max comes to mind, but that was a whole different vibe. There has been no better action movie after this movie. Not, Are you kidding me? Not in this style. Not in this like cyberpunk, like CGI style, but still. And also, the CGI has a really, really good in-world explanation. You know, the fact that he's actually bending reality. There is no spoon, so he's actually able to do it. This is the best thing I've ever seen. I mean, after this, so many movies I've tried, like the Aeon Fluxes and that Christian Bale movie where he's doing gunfu. And uh, you didn't like that. 
No, I hated it because it was just a Matrix ripoff. He was even wearing the Neo overcoat. How lame was that? No, that's he literally does that like in two scenes to that movie. Nothing has come close since '99. What does that tell you about their accomplishment? I feel like I feel like a hundred movies at least have done better action. Name uh, '95. A hundred movies have done better CGI. And just because this movie is set in a world where action and CGI are slightly overlapping doesn't necessarily have to mean that other movies have to do it or try. Name, name some. You can't just action say movies. Have you seen the Raid Redemption or any of the Raid movies? Those guys killed it in action. What are you talking about? Like movies like that are yeah, but so action much. plus CGI. Yeah, because there's no need for CGI in that movie. What is the action CGI in this movie? Oh, pun- fast punching. Bullet time. Bullet time, kya hai? Fast punching. The kung see, fu, that's even, very, the training, uh, even the training sequence between Morpheus and Neo, it's like... Except for the fast punching and stuff, it's non-CGI action. It's like Hong Kong wirefu, like... Yeah, all the Hong Kong wirefu movies do it better. Into mainstream cinema in the best possible way at 99. Maybe Hong Kong wirefu has moved on, but combined with bullet time. Like, did you ever look up how they did bullet time? I don't care. I'm not that fascinated with bullet time. What are you saying? I never understood the whole, oh my God, he's bending backwards and people trying to emulate it all the time. I didn't get it. That was a character moment. That's when he actually actually just comes out badass as the one which is what actually makes it like very meaningful in the movie as for the actual like bending backwards dodging bullets thing the way they do that thing was unimaginable to that point people would do this style of photography where you keep the subject in the center and then just put cameras like 20 cameras all around it then the subject is frozen and you can actually rotate the image like 20 years ago that was fascinating now we have 3d photography these guys did it for moving images so they actually lined up these cameras and then they shot them one frame at a time and so that's why when Trinity jumps up in the air, you can like actually circle around. I mean, that is moving forward visual effects at a time where like digital visual effects and CGI was just being invented, like just coming up. Sure. Okay. You know what? I think I got off on the wrong foot in terms of my appreciation for the CGI and the special effects in this movie. It's obviously very, very good. And especially for 1999, it was great. But to make a movie revolving around the CGI and special effects is the problem I have. This is not a good movie. This is not a good, well-rounded movie. It's a great CGI special effects fest, but that's about it. And that's why I keep alluding to it as a video game. Talking about other... Deja Vu, Glitch in the Matrix. Great. Talking about other actors in this movie, all right? Firstly, I had completely forgotten the glasses that Lawrence Fishburne wears in this movie. Epic. Epic? Epic? How how did they stay on his face firstly? Stupid point, but how did they stay on his face? Especially when he's doing his fights. What do you mean? How? You're saying it as though they make it unrealistic that they stay on his face. He's actually wearing them. So clearly they do stay on his face. Also, I forgot how pretentious this character was, man. Don't what? you think he was super pretentious, Morpheus? No. Come on, man. He's like the big daddy in the beginning, but then he shows his vulnerability. He shows his human side. Then you realize he has so much faith. He's like a freedom fighter who just has faith in this prophecy of the one and eventually literally attempts to give his life for it and then he gets rescued. Then he rides in a helicopter. Mm-hmm. Then he fights. Mm-hmm. Glorious. Great. Glorious, man. I didn't get it at all. I actually got a little peeved looking at uh, Morpheus, especially in the first half of the movie because he's just so... Oh, the Oracle told me what exactly what I needed to hear. Oh, look at my glasses. But then that melts away. Isn't that the cool part? It's almost like I think his it melts facade. Away, no, I think it melts away more from the context of movies two and three. But in movie one in itself, it's still pretty much there. Let me just point out something here because we didn't discuss this at the start of the feud. We are not going to talk about movies two and three because it's irrelevant. And they suck. Okay, maybe. I mean, I think two is okay. I think they suck. I like the whole sort of storyline and how it concludes and all of that. But in in just looking at movies from um, st- a standalone point of view, I don't think 2 and 3 were that great. You're breaking the exact rule. I just asked you. You not. brought it up. I wasn't even going to talk about it. So I don't I don't think Morpheus' character loses his pretentiousness throughout this movie. I think he does a pretty good job at holding on to it. They're all just competing to be badass. Like Morpheus has the moments of being absolute badass when he's training Neo. Then when you realize how powerful he is, like when he actually takes on the agents and kind of does an okay job in the beginning. For, for a, five seconds? Yeah, for five seconds. <laughs> but nobody survives that long even. Yeah. And uh, I mean, he just punches through walls, bro. That's pretty cool, right? And uh, No, it's not, dude. <laughs> Come on. You can just like give him positives just for the sake of it. Talking about agents. Talking about agents. All right. Hugo Weaving. Yeah. His performance was like a little fun to watch initially. Uh-huh. But then he just kept on doing the same thing. No, he didn't. I will... Talk like an agent this episode, Mr. Singleson. I am going to talk like this with you for the entire episode and see that you're going to punch me in the next 30 seconds. How can you, how is that fun to watch? It's annoying. It's menacing. It's annoying. Knowing how powerful he is. And by the way, in the end, he reveals that he's actually the only one who has character, right? He actually is a program. He's a, he's a, whatever, a, 
piece of code that actually wants to break out of the system. So the rest of the agents are actually like how you're describing them. They're kind of the equivalent of meaningless henchmen. But, I mean, Agent Smith ends up being a real villain. He actually has motivations. He's not just doing something a program is telling them to do. His portrayal, his character, I don't know how much involvement Wachowski's had or was how much direction they gave weaving in terms of the portrayal. But I understand he's a computer program. But shouldn't there be some sort of originality in how that's portrayed? Like my three-year-old niece would have the same portrayal of a computer program as he did. It's just like slow talking. Really? Yes, I am the. That's all he does. How is how is that good acting? Like, help me understand that. So what? The role didn't require him to act much. It did by the end of it, by the way. Why don't you try and act like that? Not a good actor. I don't want to. Yeah, everybody knows that. Look at you trying to act that you don't like this movie. That's whatever. Dude, come on. I think Hugo Weaving, I actually like him as an actor. I like all of Because the... of this movie? No, because of like Lord of the Rings and V for Vendetta and stuff like that. Do you know? Just compare V for Vendetta and this movie. Same director, same creators and all of that, right? Same actor, but playing someone with the mask on. So it's not like he has his facial expressions to go off of. He uses so much tonality in that character. But here, he's just like... That this character required tonality. Plus I would assume this on. character would too, right? Like he's You just, assume wrong. Look at the movie. Look at the output. I didn't like the output. That's why I'm trying to That's what I'm trying to say. I don't think Hugo Weaving did a good job as Mr. Smith. I think there was... It was very redundant by the end of it. Agent Smith. Uh, Agent Smith, I apologize. And I think it was very redundant by the end of it. There could have been a lot more to his role that could have made the character so much better. I can't believe it. I can't believe the stupid points you have. Here I am just trying to, just trying to, what's the line for the movie I'm trying to throw in your face right mm. now? Mm. I'm just trying to show you the door. Because and I'm trying I have to, to walk through it. And you yeah. have to walk through it. Dude, I, we'll get the writing. Just dude. take we'll the, get red the writing. Pill. Take yeah. the red pill. Just yeah. come onto my side. Just free your mind. Vikram. 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 Hey, Vikram. Vikram. Yeah. There is no spoon, bro. <laughs> Jesus, dude. Also, I mean, Carrie Ann Moss, like you've already mentioned how big of a crush you have on her. Uh, Literally no comment, man. Actually, wait, I'll take that back. Not commendable, rather. When Cypher was just lusting over her, Mm -hmm. I got it. You got it? I got it. Dude, she's literally there to just fill that female protagonist role. What what does she have to offer except for, I love you you for pleasure. I love you, don't... What? (laughs) It's the dominatrix outfit. Oh, Jesus, dude. That's why you like her, right? That's pretty much why you like her. No, because she's badass. The movie opens with her being badass. Mm -hmm. Like I said, all of these characters get their moment to shine. I mean, Neo right at the end. But before that, Carrie Ann Moss opens the movie with that like Trinity chase scene. My favorite part is then when she's trying to run away from an agent, she jumps through this window and you're kind of confused how she's even alive because you don't understand the rules. And actually, we'll get to that. Jumps through this window, does like a little like rollover and immediately turn around and points her two guns at the window. You remember that right in the opening scene? Yeah. Badass introduction to Trinity, dude. So good. You're just thinking of her outfit this entire time, aren't no, you? No, 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 no. I moved past it. I'm thinking of her guns. Oh, guns? I don't know, man. I didn't I didn't think Trinity as a character had much to offer to this movie except for being the love interest and sort of That's very huge. community She's... using that as a part of the ending, a, a very crucial part of the ending. Well, because it's a Jesus analogy. We haven't talked about we haven't talked about that, but it's oh, there's a Jesus, Jesus analogy too. Well, in the sense that she enables. Can you, can you just, just like note it down? Let me know what all analogies are there, so that I can keep that in my head. Because it's very difficult to keep it again. Again, this just this just makes me. I win the feud. You don't even understand that this is all basically a big Jesus analogy. Okay, he's the one. He dies. He gets resurrected. He has powers. Mm-hmm. In fact, who's Mary? Well, I guess Trinity. But you know, <laughs> that, that's that's, 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 not, that's not the crucial part of it. Oh, that's not. But Morpheus is the guy who believes, you know, Mm -hmm. Morpheus was, uh, he was a god of dreams in like (laughs) literature, whatever, Greek literature. So he shows Neo what the way is. Uh Anderson means son of Ander, son of Christ, son of man. Uh Which Uh, one's Plato? Is there uh, Plato in this? There is a Plato angle to it. Wait, Uh what was it? What was it? Yeah, make one up, make one up. No, 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 I'll Uh tell you. Uh Uh-huh. Because I'm smarter and a more uh-huh. avid, more avid. deeper movie watcher. You're a more you. avid, deeper watcher. The Oracle angle. <laughs> the Oracle. You just said more avid, deeper watcher. Yeah, yeah. I also said deepness <laughs> instead of depth. So, you know. the When they go to meet the Oracle, uh-huh. that represents so like... Oracle's Plato? No, no. Oh. Socrates. Socrates. Went to Socrates. go meet the Oracle of Delphi. Right. And he asked like, who's the smartest man in the world? And okay. Then, so, like, Oracle like or Delphi. So, so, there's Gerard Butler from 300 also in this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, shut the f- <laughs> and then the Oracle of Delphi told Socrates that you are, okay. but Socrates refused to believe her. Or are him. we still talking about the Matrix? Uh, yeah, because Neo goes to the Oracle, she says, you're oh. the one, and he rejects it. Right. And so Socrates rejected, he was the smartest, and then he went around finding someone who was smarter, smarter than him. and then right. eventually had to like... So Neo is Socrates, mm-hmm. 
and Jesus. I and mean, Trinity is Mary, and Morpheus was I forget. Sorry. That's like saying Lion King is based on Hamlet. So, oh, who's Hamlet, and who's the witch, and who's that? Uh-huh. No, it's just it's it's themes. They've, oh. they've combined a lot of things. Ah, uh, so no Shakespeare in this one, no? No, there's some Wizard of Oz. Just checking, just checking, dude. There's so many things. It's, it's tough, man. It's tough to keep up. I'm not as smart. I have a deeper watch as you are. So I'm just blowing your mind right now. Yeah. Also yours, I feel like a little bit. The rate at which you're rapidly coming out with bullshit is pretty impressive. I'm not man. radically poetic. Remember that's. <laughs> this movie is yeah it is massively can we use that as a way to talk about the music the soundtrack the ost the selection uh sure yeah why not come on vikram i mean i love the ost because you know i love the raging as a machine i do but just uh, concede not the soundtrack the ost no but the the usage of it the club to death Nah. The hallways, the fight scene, uh, the ending, wake ups. It's so perfect. The fact that it's a rage against the machine and wake up. What a beautiful way to. No, end that's a movie. that's brilliant. Obviously, wake ups in itself such a good song. They're such a good band, but they only use them sparingly during the credits and all. The 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 soundtrack in the movie is actually pretty bad, man. It's like an eighties like like futuristic like whatever whatever the soundtrack of an 80s futuristic low budget movie would you mean be, the score firstly the score sorry yes i was using the wrong term with soundtrack but the score is pretty pathetic the soundtrack the ost is great i love the songs in the ost yeah i think the soundtrack and the score they, they use a lot of like real soundtrack songs for the score i thought it was actually amazing except the only time i'll grant this for you which I don't know why, because you seem to be conceding nothing for some reason. I conceded the CGI and the special effects. What more do you want? There's nothing else to concede in this movie. I'm sorry. Okay, I, I conceded the score during the Kung Fu scene. I actually thought it was weak. That's the score the entire movie, dude. That's pretty good. Man. That's all that no is. No idea you could beatbox. That's not beatboxing, with her. It just goes to show that that's the, that's a low level that impresses you. That's not beatboxing, firstly. <laughs> and if that's impressive to you, then oh my god, just go watch some low budget eighty futuristic movies. Do you remember the woman in the red dress? That's when they use uh, all the good songs. Or do you remember the hallway fight? Well, the red dress was like a three second sequence. How can you? How can they use all the good songs in that sequence? No, no. I mean, they use Rage Against the Machine. They use Club to Death. How good was Club to Death, man? Yeah, it's okay. There's so many songs that are like more popular, including Wake Up, which obviously RATM is popular in its own right. But this movie popularized Wake Up. That's like that's, that's credit to the movie in itself. That's bullshit. No, it's not. Of course it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Okay. I, I will never agree to that. And you, you know that. Impasse. You all, you already know I'm never going to agree to that. Raising as a machine popularized Wake Up. The Matrix has used it. Vikram, just 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 take the red pill, bro. What are you doing? Okay, can we can we talk about plot holes? Vikram. Or do you not Vikram. accept this as a movie at all? Vikram, plot? Vikram, Vikram. Yeah, what? You think that's air you're breathing now? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm breathing like f***ing <laughs> methane, dude, from your farting. <laughs> You're a brain in a vat, bro. Uh-huh. You're a brain in a vat. Okay, can we talk about plot holes? Yeah, or sure. Can we? Can you accept that this movie has a plot of some sort? How did this movie not make two billion dollars? Like before we get to your nitpicky two plot holes, billion dollars. It had to. It had to. I don't know what happened. You know the messed up part. This was the fifth highest grossing movie that year. Yeah. In the US, I believe it. No, I don't believe it. I mean, if nothing else, the spectacle alone, you would think, in, especially in this era, that's what would happen. The spectacle alone would make you hundreds of millions of dollars. This movie made, it, I mean, it made less mo- money than The Sixth Sense. Okay, I get it. The Sixth Sense was a phenomenon. We feuded it. This movie made less money than The Phantom Menace. Had okay, of I get course it. it of to. course. Yeah. The Phantom Menace was the first Star Wars movie in like 20 years, right? This movie made less money domestically. Then Austin Powers, the spy who shagged me. That was such a commercially successful movie. Dude, that is so sad. Why are you even talking about box office numbers? Fucking Venom made $800 billion, dude. No, that's right now. Forget that. This it, is a different era. Then it was actually realistic. The box office showings were actually realistic at this time because now they're completely skewed. Box office now is realistic. That's your point. No, I'm saying it's completely skewed. Venom made $800 million. It's n- Every box- Transformers movie and Pirates movie yeah, makes a billion. Yeah, so right now, though, of course, I was. I'm saying maybe at that time it was actually... You know, alluding to how good a movie actually is. Okay, then that's a point for me, right? It still no. made like $500 million in 99. Yeah, the sixth highest grossing movie of the year. Yeah, great stuff, man. Like, oh my God, they killed it. The Spy Who Shagged Me made more money than The Matrix. The I world actually like Austin right. Powers, man. I don't oh, know why. Man. I don't like admitting it, but I like Austin Powers. And how did the Wachowski brothers even get to make this movie, man? They made like one or two movies before this. They made a $6 million movie called Bound. And uh, whoever like bought the script, whichever studio, uh, Warner Brothers, I guess, but whoever had the studio... He'd essentially liked them a lot, and so he'd bought like a three movie deal, and so they just they just somehow wrote this script and sold it. They, and they sold a three movie deal. Amazing, dude! And you know, I've heard like if you read their script, like I have read some scripts, you know, time and again. 
like Quentin scripts I'll read because he writes them themselves. He actually publishes a shooting script. So those are obviously great. I've read Inception. That's obviously great. There's some designs for all the dream uh, machines and all that. And which actually we should talk about. Inception is just a weak matrix. Just something for you to stew on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to record this and keep this. This is being me. recorded, by the way. No, no, no. Just this part, this clip. And Inception gonna... is a weak matrix for sure. Got it. Inception is a weak Johnny Quest, dude. Johnny Quest. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, the the script for this movie, they actually had described each action scene within the script. Like, that was so much a part of their vision. Yeah, because there was no dialogue, there was no script to write. So they, there this was no script a, to write. This is literally an action fest. So they're like, let's just write the action sequences and publish them. Wow. What? What? There is no script, there's no plot, there's no movie. You know How what? much can I stress on that, dude? And why can't you agree with me here? Dude, the script is actually such a positive for this movie. It's actually very tight. And you know what? We watch this movie now because everybody's seen The Matrix. We all know what's there in the movie. But when this movie came out, the trailers did a really good job of not revealing what's happening. So they showed the Matrix part. They didn't show the real world angle at all. So the first act is so crazy. Think about what's happening, right? There's a mystery. You don't know what's going on. There's this Trinity character. Then these agents come. They put a bug in his belly button. Yeah, this which, is disgusting. But that's the thing. It's like this almost like a horror, like, you know, like uh, one of those gory movies in that sense. Because when his mouth closes up, that always freaked me out. So it's kind of like this David Lynchian mystery, except it's not Lynchian because he actually explains it. You know, and the movie actually unfurls after that. And the first act ends with him coming to the real world. That blew people's minds. Like, nobody knew that was going to be part of the movie. We don't appreciate it on that level, but just think about watching it for the first time, man. Like, it just catches you by surprise. It's like a mystery that unfurls. And then, when they actually give the exposition for everything else, they do it in a fun way. Morpheus gives exposition during Kung Fu. They do the exposition during the woman in the red dress sequence, which is all mind-blowing. And then they make characters actually respond to that exposition when that kid asks him, how did you like the woman in the red dress? You learn more about the world in an interesting way. That's really hard to execute. That's all towards the script. That has nothing to do with the action scenes. Firstly, I feel like you're overusing the weightage of the term mind-blowing, okay? This isn't mind-blowing. If the script is so tight and it's so well-rounded, then why does this movie have so many bloody plot holes, man? Like, the it doesn't hold up. The plot of this movie doesn't hold up. It's sci-fi. It's gonna have some holes. They might not be plot holes. Okay, firstly, the biggest plot hole, according to me, or a fault in the script or the fault in the story, whatever you want to call it, is the bloody ending. The fault in our stars, maybe? No, not maybe. The ending of this movie. I have such a big problem with the ending of this movie. What? the jesus stuff he, he wakes up wake up how he like wakes up. what is you can't just just how like how does jesus come sense? back from the dead jesus isn't a thing dude come on <gasps> oh my god we're gonna have protesters bro bring it on bro i'll happily talk to them but this is a movie and i have my views like this isn't the bible we're talking about right he's the one that doesn't explain anything brother. i've just go, just listen to what you're saying he wakes up because he realizes that he can't die no he wakes up because trinity looks over him said i won't let you die and gives him a puppy and he wakes up man that's a powerful puppy <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, like they're trying to show him bending the laws of the universe, tightly controlled and then like explosive ending. And it's just like bring him back from the dead. Literally, that's what you have for everything. Everything else. Oh, he's not being able to jump. He's dodging a bullet. He's doing fast punching. Oh, my God. Like cool CGI. This, that. Ye kar sakta hai, wo kar sakta hai. And then ending me. I don't know, man. He's a piece of code that can't die. It's just that he hasn't leaned into it and realized that yet. So he wakes up. <laughs> he rages against the machine. <laughs> He wakes up oh, dude. and the puppy is the catalyst. If you think that this is a weak ending, I think you're going to be very disappointed by the Bible. <laughs> and pretty much any religious text ever. Yeah, I don't consider them to be good movies, man. That's why. They're good stories. Maybe. Is this, are... is this a good story or a good movie? We're talking about The Matrix, the movie, or The Matrix, the comic book, or The Matrix, the script, or The Matrix, the video game. You're complaining. All of those are good, by the way. And you're complaining about the story of the movie. And I'm just clarifying. The whole point of showing him flying is just showing like now his powers begin to really show. I, okay, fine, I understand that, but they can't they can't precede that with a heavy influence of if you die in the Matrix, you die in real life. Except Neo. No, ex and showing it, Neo is susceptible to that law as well. So it's not like okay, just imagine not once this. he's the one. What does that mean? You just you can't just keep saying that you're being the movie right now, right? That's that's my problem. You, you're not making any sense just by saying that he's the one. What is the one Vikram. supposed to mean? Ye of little faith, dude. I'm telling you, the Wachowski brothers were just sitting together, and it's like ending time, Agya, and like. Yo, Larry, what you got, you know? And he's like, oh, dude, let's kill him and bring him back because of love. And then Andy's like, oh, my God, bro, I like it. I love it. Let's pop some acid now. And then just like, bro, everything, bro, slow-mo, bro, sub kuch hai, promise hai, haan, chali, le, acid khale. It's This movie's an acid trip. 
And then he's like, bro, want to be my sis? <laughs> And that was this week's episode of Film Feud. Hope you guys enjoyed. I enjoyed it. I did too, but not this movie. But our pleasant listeners, the good folk, I hope they enjoyed it because now we feud it and they get to decide who they think won. You guys can vote on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our website. Let us know who you think won the feud. Let us know what arguments you might have made. Let us know what movie you want us to feud next. You can find us on social media at Film Feud Pod or MuncherMedia.com. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher, CastBox, Pocket Cast, wherever you find your podcasts. We love those five-star ratings. Catch you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.